Hello everyone and welcome to the class. David A. Cox here with PCClassesOnline.com and today we're going to be talking about some of the new features in the updated version of Windows 8 referred to as simply Windows 8.1. Now before we begin today there's a couple of things I want to note before any of you hopefully upgrade. Um, in the process of upgrading our computers to Windows 8.1 I want to share with you what happened. In the middle of the download it corrupted and it wiped out all of our data. So it took a total of 15 attempts to update, to upgrade rather, to Windows 8.1 for it to finally take. Now I'm going to show you all the different features here that we think are going to be most relevant to all of you and I am not going to edit this video other than putting in the opening and the closing. The reason why I'm going to show you that is because one of the things you're going to notice is that apps run slower than ever before. Now some of you may be able to hear depending on how advanced your speakers are. You can hear without doing anything the fans are cranking on my laptop just so that I can have it open basically. It is not processor friendly. There are a lot of problems but I'm going to show you the new features that are available and let you of course decide whether or not to update. One of the features uh, that is in Windows 8.1 is you'll notice that on the taskbar there is now a Windows button. Um, in Windows 8 a very common theme is that there are no menus. You have to know where to put your cursor and sometimes right click, sometimes left click in order to get those menus to appear. So it is nice that there is a uh, Windows Start button at the bottom which goes back to the traditional Start uh, screen. Now another feature that I want to show you is if you right click while you're on the taskbar you'll see that we now have a few other options as far as properties goes. Um, of course you can do some of the more basic ones. Do you want the taskbar to be at the bottom, the left, the right, the top? Or under navigation, this is a big one here, under start screen there's an option when you start, it, when you open up the computer it will go to the desktop instead of the start screen, a feature that I think a lot of people are going to be interested in for those of you who do decide to update. Hit OK on that. A couple other features we have. If you have a Windows key on your keyboard, uh, there is now a unified search function. So what you can do is search, it'll use Bing, and it will search not just for things on the web, but it will also search for things on your computer, whether it's photos, documents, etc. Now, I personally don't understand why that feature is something that they think people would want, because if I'm on the web, I'm not looking for things on my computer. I'm just looking for things on the web. So that is a new feature. Next, uh, back in when Windows 8, the original version, came out, there was a feature where you could run apps side by side. So let me show you an example here. Let's launch the sports app. Now the way that you run an app in multi-screen mode, split screen mode rather, and you are seeing in real time how long it takes just to load one app. And this is on a pretty advanced computer. Okay, so it finally finally loaded. What you do is you start your cursor at the top of the screen. It turns into a hand and pull down with your cursor. And you can now move it to the right or left. And it should lock in. Now, when we were teaching this live earlier, this, by the way, right now is being pre-recorded because we had so many different issues when we were teaching this live. Um, this crashed the computer, just running an app in, in multi-screen mode. So now you have half a screen to run another app and half a screen to focus on whatever you have here. Now apps for the most part don't really look good when you're running them side by side. Um, a lot of people out there like this idea of multitasking despite the fact that the human brain is technically incapable of multitasking but you can have two things open at once. I just don't feel like it's a good experience. So the way you would theoretically open a second app is you'd hit your Windows key and open up a second app. Let's just go in for now to, oh, let's say travel. Now the split screen mode portion of this is not new. What is new is that you now have a few different sizes that you can use. You can do 50-50 view, which is what you're seeing right now. The other option is you can move this little sidebar over 
and you can run it 7525. Okay, so I'm going to have one app that's a lot larger than the other. Now, this can be really useful if you're on the web and you want to have maybe your music open over here on the left-hand side or right-hand side. You can do whatever you want. Now, if you saw that, that's how long it took just to load the travel app. It took a pretty long time. In general, looking at the amount of load time in the previous version in Windows 8 versus 8.1, 8.1 does seem right now to be significantly slower. For those of you out there who do use multiple displays or if you have a really high resolution display, you'll be happy to learn that now in settings, and you're going to change PC settings, there are a lot more different viewing options. It's going to try to run that in split screen mode. Let's see what happens. Now, I'm not actually touching my computer right now. This is what's happening on its own. Okay, good, it loaded. Let's go into PC and Devices, and you'll see here that at the second option down, which is Display, you can now fine-tune the resolution to make it whatever you want. And let's say for whatever reason, maybe you have like a kiosk in a mall, you can change the orientation of your monitor, so you can make it vertical if you like, too. And down here, under More Options, you can now change the size of apps, text, and other items on the screen. Okay. Next feature, this is a wonderful one. Glad that they did this. This should have been out when Windows 8 originally came out. Was um, There's a lot of new ways that you do things in general with Windows 8. And there is now, finally, a tutorial app, which comes pre-installed. So here, you can see it's called Help and Tips. And when you click on it, there are video tutorials to walk you through everything when it comes to Windows 8.1, including how to navigate, kind of your, your way around the operating system, the various settings, how to access your files. One of the features we'll be talking about in a little bit is SkyDrive, which is pretty handy. Okay, basic actions. And when you go into any of these, you can play a little video and it'll give you kind of a breakdown of how to do whatever. For example, right now it's showing you how to do the charms. There's a bunch of new apps that come pre-installed in Windows 8.1, which I found to be a little odd that they came pre-installed, but that's the way they're doing it. So, for example, you'll see that there is now a food and drink app. There is a health app. All these things are kind of just like a, you know, a very picturesque version of WebMD or Food Network's website, that kind of thing. Um, so if we go into food and drink... Okay, so you can go through here. They do have great, you know, photos. You can scroll through and look at recipes. It's kind of darting around a little bit on me. So you can click here on collections, add a recipe, okay, or you can browse through the ones that they have online. So you go into soup and stew, for example. Okay. Now, one of the features that I do like um, about this is that there is a feature, it's a new app um, called Reading List. So let's say I like this uh, smoky minestrone and I want to save it for later. One of the features that you can now do, hello, come on, is go to the bottom right, pull up on the charms, and you'll see here that there is a share button when you click on it. I can save this clicking on it. I can save it as a, a bookmark so I can come back to it later on. I was kind of hoping it was going to put it into the reading list, but it doesn't seem to want to allow me to do that. So, as you can see here, the, um, the new feature, let me try to give you maybe a better example. Let's go to the web for that one. Let's go to Internet Explorer. So let's say I have an article, I'm just on the funny website, The Onion. If I have a funny article that I want to save for later, I can click on it, wait for it to load. Very, very slow load times, as you can see here. And we're on a full broadband connection, no other devices are on. OK, 
Okay, so if I want to save it for later, I can pull up my charms, click on share. Officials for the Centers for Disease Contraction Let's and Preservation. Let's pause that. And here we have reading list, so I can bookmark it for later. Oops. So now if I go into reading list, which is an app here, I can click on that and it'll show me the various articles that I have decided to read for later. Now it does store those offline, so if you don't have an internet connection, it's okay. Now you all saw, come on, yes, I got it. It's not a... <laughs> it's not liking it right now. Yes, I'm aware of how it's done. Even though I've saved those articles, it does not necessarily save them. Another app that now comes with the computer is Sound Recorder, which is very basic. Um, And basically, you just it, there's not a lot of options here. You just simply click on the little microphone icon. And this is to show you that you can record audio with your computer, which apparently people care about. So you can click play. And this is to show you that you can record audio with your computer. There's trim options down here at the bottom right. This is really nothing more than a voice memo app, but... Um, Anyways, that comes pre-installed now. Uh, next is the Microsoft Store. has a bit of a new look, a bit of a facelift, um, but not for all areas. Um, I do like that they give you now a little bit more of a preview of what the various apps look like before you go buying them. Still waiting. So as you can see here, they do have featured apps. You can search for them in the search bar at the top right. Okay, so when I see one that I want to get, let's say I click on this one here. if it loads and you do get these screenshots up here now so you can see a little bit about what the app itself looks like okay next feature is SkyDrive now SkyDrive has some very nice features when it works so basically with SkyDrive you have to have a Microsoft account and what it allows you to do is to store your documents, your photos, and really everything, your settings, apps, um, on the cloud. So what that will do is, let's say you have two computers, maybe one at work and one at home. As long as you're saving everything to SkyDrive, it'll automatically update on both computers. So you don't have to worry about saving things to a flash drive. It'll just automatically have access to that. Now, we did have some issues with SkyDrive working um, as far as getting it to load properly. Um, and saving data, but for the most part, people haven't re reported many issues with it. For those of you who are familiar with Microsoft Messenger, which only debuted about, I think it was about a year ago, um, they have completely gotten rid of it. So that is gone. Instead, now the computer comes preloaded with Skype. Um, a new feature is that if you are on the lock screen, you can receive Skype calls, so you don't have to actually sign in to do that. You don't have to be on the actual application in order to do that. Once again, very, very sluggish load times. 
Um, when you're in your start screen, one of the features is you'll see that there's a little arrow here at the bottom left corner. And when you click on it, it gives you a list of all of the different apps that you have here. So for example, uh, this is a new feature. I can click and I can organize these in different ways. So I can organize them by name, date installed, the ones that I've used the most, or by category. You also have a little search bar up here. So if I'm trying to find music, it finds it. And finally, there is now a feature where you can make these tiles different sizes. Um, no more kind of, I think they only had two options, I believe, before. So let's say I want to make Internet Explorer here huge. I can two-finger click on it. I'm sorry, right-click on it, rather. And I can hit resize. Oops. Huh. So for not, not every app allows you to have multiple sizes, I guess. Whereas if I go to mail resize you'll see here that there's large wide medium and small so I don't really know why they're only allowing some apps to be larger than others but that's the way they're doing it oh I believe is actually probably if I do this nope they're still not allowing it so I can only go medium or small for Internet Explorer some apps you can make larger than others for no real apparent reason, but that's it. So that is kind of the little preview of some of the, the main new features in Windows 8.1. Once again, I am not encouraging any of you to do the update. You're more than welcome to, but I have to put a value on my advice, and I don't want people sending me angry letters saying, I updated to 8.1 because you told me to, and now I lost everything. So um, that's it. I hope you've enjoyed this class or at least found it, found it informative. Uh, this is David A. Cox with PCClassesOnline.com, and you all have a wonderful day. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye.